My name is Charles Sterling from Sterling Power. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown on how to make camper vans do what you think they do, i.e. charge your batteries while you're going from place to place. If you're going from site to site all the time then none of this has any relevance, but if you want to go from site to um, charge as you drive along the road and end up somewhere and stay there like wild side camping, then this is extremely relevant. We did a Mercedes Sprinter the other week. Uh, there's a YouTube video on it and I'm trying to sort of break down what I've found recently on other vehicles, just how bad they are and what you can do to fix them. So I'll give you a quick rundown on how your camper van basically works. So on your engine side, you have your alternator here. Uh, you'd have your starter motor here. So that's your alternator, starter motor and then your engine battery. So that's your engine battery there. You have a cable that comes from your alternator to your starter motor and then you've got your starter motor cable coming to your starter battery. And that's basically your wiring diagram at the moment for your uh, engine side of your camper van. On the other side you've probably got one or two uh, what you'd call service batteries or domestic batteries, so service. So you've got one or two service batteries, so of course how do you join these together? Well, unfortunately um, I found this unit here which seems to be very common and uh, I've been trying to actually get ratings for it. This is a sort of pretty standard thing that you'll see on your camper van, uh, sort of a power distribution box. Now I've been trying to get ratings for this but if you look on the side here it says maximum power or maximum current is 26 amps but if you look at the fuse on the front it's actually 20 amps fuse so I don't know how you get 26 amps down a 20 amp fuse um, so I would rate this unit somewhere around 15 amps. Right so what they do is they take a wire from your engine battery up to that unit and then from your engine battery down to your domestic. So that's pretty much your circuit that you have on your vehicle. Now what I don't understand, and this is prolific in your industry, your alternator you know, a couple of years ago would average around say 90 amps. Now, a modern alternator uh, was probably in the region of 200 amps. Okay, so you've got between 90 and 200 amps on your alternator. You've probably got between 1, uh, 100 here, to 200 amps of batteries. Now, you would think, as anyone would, that you can charge your back battery here at 200 amps. Well, what I don't understand, and which is absolutely factual, is this unit here in the middle, I would call continuously rated at 15 amps. So who in the right mind designed a system which has a 90 to 200 amp alternator in this end, a couple of hundred amps of batteries in this end, and stuck in the middle is a 15 amp continuously rated unit. Now, <laughs> the only way this can work, I mean this should blow up, how do you get 200 amps into your batteries at the back? At the back? Um, this unit here should fail, absolutely should fail. Now the only way you can stop that unit from failing is to do an appalling job in this cable here. Okay, now technically speaking this system should be fit to carry 90 to 200 amps. That would be the rating for this system. So this cable should be able to carry at least 90 to 200 amps of cable. Now if you deliberately make this cable bad, is the only way to describe it, then you can restrict the amount of current going into this box which in turn restricts the amount of current that you can charge your battery. 
So instead of being able to put 90 to 200 amps into your back battery, if you put a rubbish cable here, then you can reduce it down to below 15 amps to charge the batteries at the back. So why would you buy a vehicle which has got 90 to 200 amp charging capability, deliberately restrict it into a 100 to 200 amp battery? Now here's the problem. The cable that uh, vehicle builders seem to use is somewhere about this size here. Okay, The cable they should be using is somewhere around this size here. So as you can see, there is a difference. So for the sake of the extra cost to do the job right, in other words, put a decent cable here, and a decent cable here, and then a decent box here that can carry 150 to 200 amps, the, the charging system would have worked. You would have got what you thought you were buying when you first bought the vehicle. Uh, there's probably about an extra 200 pounds in cabling and stuff, maybe 300 pounds at the most. So your 80, 90,000 pound vehicle has been totally compromised over the sake of 90 or a couple of hundred pounds, which is, uh, I really can't get my head around that one. Um, so anyway, how do we fix this? Uh, the basic problem is this cable here is just completely useless. So the best thing to do is just remove the cable here from the, um, go down to the starter battery, you'll find a connector somewhere on the starter battery that's feeding this unit. Just disconnect that cable, tape it up and make sure it's out of the way, somewhere safe. So in other words, your, your vehicle is no longer charging your batteries at the back. Leave all the rest as it is, there's no problem there. Sort of stuff you're taking out here of proper thickness. Um, we do a product called a battery to battery charger that fits here and then from here we go to the domestic battery bank. So this offers a new route to the domestic battery bank with a four stage battery to battery charger in it. So they look something like this here, that would be a, a 30 amp version and this here would be a 60 amp version. Now we also do 120 amps and the new models coming out will go up to 240 amps. So depending on the size of alternator you have here and depending on you might have 400 amps of batteries there you can put a larger unit on than 60 or 120 amps. It's up to you. For your cabling, to make sure you put the right size cable in, on the back of our catalogue we have this, um, this page here that gives you the length and what sort of cable you should be using. So you get the right cable. It's not a guessing game, it's not doing what you feel like doing. There are standards for cable and current and voltage drops, which is what this is all about. So get the correct cable in, battery to battery charger, onto your battery, and now for the first time, your battery will actually charge well from your main engine. Okay, I'll talk about in another video about this and then what regenerative braking does and how you overcome the regenerative braking.